Respawn is a deck building trading card arena game built in Minecraft. Face off against an opponent to be the first one to score 15 points by looting, voyaging, and killing. Respawn Desert Dunes will take all these aspects and amplify them to the next level. Welcome back folks to the Respawn Desert Dunes project. I am your host Starfish5 Legend, thanks for tuning in. Today we'll be transforming the basics of the arena we built out last episode into a fully textured, stunning arena by terraforming, texturing, and building. Become a perfect canvas for the Desert Dunes. Since we were last here, a few things have been done, as you'll notice. We worked together with the community here in a couple different live streams, where we added in these nice crevasses, the big, huge cracks, if you will. We also completed the ceiling with these nice supporting pillars in this large open area. Now I'm gonna make use of the Axiom mod to start blending the terraforming together to get a more natural shapes to conjoin the floor to the walls and the walls to the ceiling. The Axiom mod is something that I recently started using and this is my first big project using it and the capabilities that it has are crazy cool. Almost like being able to 3D model directly in Minecraft itself. Right now I'm using a terrain sculptor tool that merges everything together in a breeze. It's not perfect though. After I do a few rounds shaping it out, I'm gonna then go back through and nitpick each block that looks odd or out of place until I'm happy with the final result. However, one drawback of using this tool is that it adds more than just one layer of blocks. So now I'm gonna have to painstakingly paint only the topmost layer to different color to remove all the unnecessary blocks underneath. And there we have it, a significant improvement already. It resembles a natural cavern much more now, though it's still somewhat jarring with all the different colors of wool. I'm happy with how the shape has turned out though. So now to get rid of any of the extra not seen blocks, I'm gonna go through and paint everything smooth sandstone using the Axiom paintbrush tool, having it mask the surface so only the top block changes, leaving the rest untouched. This way we can simply delete anything that isn't smooth sandstone to tidy it all up. Well, at least that's what I was hoping it would do. But after spending a fair amount of time painting, I realized that since I was using a large brush, it wasn't just affecting the visible blocks, but also any blocks touching open air behind them. This made all that work pointless, leaving plenty of unnecessary blocks behind. So I'm gonna go back through it again, this time painting everything with yellow concrete using a much narrower brush, just one block wide, ensuring it only affects the blocks I see and want to be painted. And while this was quite a tedious task, not all was bad. See, by doing this, I discovered and utilized the replace feature in Axiom, which significantly eased the process. It allowed me to swiftly replace numerous blocks at once, rather than having to break and place them individually, which was a godsend. Once everything had a vibrant yellow hue, I selected the entire structure and removed everything that was not yellow, which seemed to actually finally, effectively clean everything up. Now you may be wondering, why go through all this work just to remove a few blocks? And the reason why is because this process of ensuring there aren't any extra blocks will prove invaluable when it comes to building this structure in survival mode. Considering it's already a massive project with a lengthy material list, any opportunity to streamline the process makes future starfish much happier. Now feeling confident in the results, I use Limatica to copy a schematic of the yellow side and mirror it over by replacing all that yellow concrete with the orange concrete by editing the schematic itself before pasting it in. Then after aligning it all correctly, I pasted it in just bada boom bada bing bada boom. However, this did leave the middle section looking a bit off, so I terraformed around it to ensure it matched paying close attention to ensuring each side was very, very symmetrical. Now that that's all done, we truly have an arena canvas to work with, ready to begin applying the fancy textures including sand, sandstone, and terracotta to bring it to life. So to kick off the texturing process, I began painting the floor and some of the walls with sand. And I know what you're thinking, sand falls down, right? Well, yes, but I'm using a feature to prevent all the updates, 
so it stays in place for now. That way I can work and make this all look nice without it falling all apart. But now that I've painted everything, I had to go back down to the bottom and place in some extra blocks so it will actually prevent it from falling when the updates do happen. To do this, I used the extrude tool in Axiom, so it places another layer of blocks underneath. Then I went through and painted it all with sandstone. I painted it with red sandstone this time, so I could actually see the difference and know where I painted. But then after I finished, I changed everything back to regular sandstone. This process, however, did remove a bunch of the sand on top, which I wasn't so keen about. So I manually went back through some of the areas and added in more of that sand back to the top and manually went and added more sandstone underneath to support it. Once I was happy there, I painted a bunch more of the walls and crevasses and whatnot with sandstone just to get a good base going before moving on to the terracotta phase. Now working with this terracotta, I wanted to assemble a palette for both of the different sides of the arena so that they both have their unique differences. I'm going for a more natural strata feel with all those lovely stripes. And so I begin with doing a white stripe around the entire thing to kind of blend that terracotta into the sandstone. Then following that, a yellow stripe that blends into the orangish brown terracotta. For the ceiling, I wanted to try to do some sort of gradient but it wasn't looking that good, and so I scrapped that idea and just painted the entire ceiling that deeper brown terracotta, which I think looks great. And that actually finishes kind of this side of the arena for now. Let's move over to the Mesa where we haven't done really anything and start getting that all colored up as well. So over here on the Mesa side, I really did want to accentuate those big buttes and incorporate multiple layers of that strata. And so I took some of that sandstone back to terracotta and brought it all down only really leaving the floor being that sand and having all the walls and ceiling being that beautiful terracotta. Then I started to manually put in strata lines just like I did the other side, but that wasn't quite cutting it for over here in my opinion. So reverting back to making it all terracotta again, I then used a nice selector tool to only select a couple layers at a time to then completely copy and paste a brand new color in. So that really highlights each layer it makes it look like that natural mesa. I started with the white at the bottom again, transitioning to yellow, then terracotta, then brown, and then a white and a yellow again. Having a bit of a pattern there. Then I replaced the ceiling again with that same brown to match the other side. Now that that's all done, all those lines are in, it really starts to look like that mesa and it's looking very good. Additionally, at this time, I changed some of the mines to kind of match that strato feel with the floors being sandstone as well. Now finally over here, I just added a bit more sand to the floors, making those transition a bit more smoothly before finally being very happy with the overall appearance. Now the last part here we just need to focus on is that big crevasse over in that open area. With this big old crack, I wanted to bring in a much darker shade of brown to match soul sand because I really wanted to use soul sand as a mechanic in the game. So I could place it down different areas, making the jump across much more difficult thanks to the soul sand slowing effect. Additionally, if you fall down into this crack, you're gonna have a bit of a slowed down time on your way out. So I changed everything over to soul soil here, but then realized it kind of looked a little bland just being all that one shade of brown. So I put together a quick little palette here and a couple different colors of that same brown. Then using world edit, I selected the whole thing and pasted it all in with randomly variated blocks. And it looks quite good. However, it is a very stark contrast between that brown now and then the yellow sand. So we're gonna go back through strategically placing in some more soul soil to kind of blend it in, then using a middle block, which in this case is gonna be dripstone, kind of matches both of the colors to really kind of bring those two together. Now with that, that completes the texturing of this arena and it's looking very very splendid so i used lightmatic in copied it over then adjusted the schematic changing all the colors to match that orange side changing the sand to red sand all the terracotta to the orange terracotta all that good stuff then with a quick paste it was in and the arena is now looking significantly better the only task remaining now is to actually blend in the middle here where both of the sides converge because that's uh, not looking great 
So I employed a similar technique that we were just using for the crevasse, where I brought some of the red sand over to the yellow side and some of the yellow sand over to the red side. Then for a middle block here, I actually used mushroom blocks that have been stripped because that is like the closest middle color and it kind of looks like sand too. Now with the middle section seamlessly blended, the texturing of the arena was finally complete and it is imbued with vibrant colors and cohesive block patterns. Now to conclude this episode, I would like to focus on constructing the first main building in this arena. And of course, that is the Spawn Pyramid, which is gonna be made out of copper. Now starting with the basic shape, I utilize the regular copper blocks for now, just to kind of shape it out. And I am working with the already terraformed terrain around me, as I want the pyramid to feel slightly buried, which will not only look really cool, but it will also allow us to make the multiple exits from the pyramid to become that choose your own adventure right from the start. Then after the shape is all out, we're gonna use some of the brand new, so fancy copper blocks, including the bulbs, the chiseled copper, and of course the grates, which all look fantastic. And since I want this to be such an eye-catching building and kind of the center of focus, I'm gonna add some frog lights and some other nice things to the sides to really draw one's attention in. And that completes the kind of exterior there. Now the interior is still not done at all, but that is going to have to wait for next episode, where I plan to construct various buildings to complement the arena, adding more life and functionality, with some fancy redstone features as well. But I am so thrilled with the progress of the arena thus far. While there's still so much to be done, this current state provides an excellent canvas for integrating all of that redstone, all the traps, all the hazards that will make this game such an exhilarating experience, keeping the players engaged throughout the entire match. Thank you all for watching though. Don't forget to subscribe to stay updated on this massive project and witness its development over the coming weeks. Hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day, night, time zone, whatever it is for you. This is Starfish 5 Legend, signing off.